Hello, and welcome to the In the Mouth of Darkness summer movie preview show. The only show to give you the inside scoop on what's hot and what not to spend your money on at the multiplexes this summer. I'm your host, Darren Smith, the disco dork, and joining me is my fellow dork, Brad Gullickson, better known as Mouth Dork. Hey, Darren, how's it going? What's going on? Uh, yeah, so uh, summer movie season is upon us, and uh, I figured we'd just talk about like June, July, and August. Um, in the month of June, we got Upgrade, Hereditary, uh, Hotel Artemis, uh, Oceans 8, Incredibles 2, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, and also Sicario, Day of Soldado. Uh, out of all these, which one are you most looking forward to? I mean, for me, it's got to be Incredibles 2. Um, I mean, there are some really interesting films in that grouping. I mean, Soldado, I'm very curious yes. about getting a sequel to a movie I never thought we'd get a sequel to. Right. Uh, but... Incredibles 2, Brad Bird's return, yeah. 15 years yeah. after the original. Yeah. What is that going to be? Um, do you think with the, uh, since the first Incredibles came out, with how comic book films have blown up MCU, Avengers is, is currently killing it in the box office right now. Do you think Pixar and Brad Bird specifically are going to do anything to look at the state of superhero movies and well, integrate that into the story? We've maybe? seen a couple trailers for the film already. Right. There's nothing in those trailers that really suggests to me that it's going to revolutionize the genre. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to continue to show Marvel how to make a good Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, there's already been another Fantastic Four film since the original film that has crashed and burned. That's right. Uh, you know, these. This is you know Reed Richards and Sue Richards. This is the team really that we we have always wanted right, right here with with the Incredibles. Yeah. Um. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I can't say that I'm super excited about it, but I think a lot of it has to do with because of the length of time that it's been. I would say a few months after, well, not a few months, but a year or so after the first one came out with the way the, the, the original ended, like I was clamoring for a sequel, but I, I guess I've kind of grown. Uh, well, that's always the danger, right? right. You know, uh, it w you have Zoolander, and then 20 years later, you have Zoolander 2. No one cares. Yikes. <laughs> But with The Incredibles, I mean, Pixar's something special, and they've proven that they can take a sequel to a film many years later and create something special. Uh, you know, Finding Dory elevated oh, you know, Finding Nemo. Yeah. Uh, the Toy Story franchise, I mean, my goodness. Yeah. You know, Toy Story 3 might be my favorite Toy Story film. So I would not be surprised if The Incredibles 2 ends up being in my top five favorite films of the summer. And, and you know, Brad Bird... I don't know if you when the last time you watched Iron Giant. Um, Still holds up. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He's an amazing filmmaker. Yeah, Mission is. Possible Ghost Protocol. And I even like, you know, World of Tomorrow. Great film. Yeah. Uh, I'm look I agree. Brad Bird's a good filmmaker. Um, I'm excited to see what he does with uh, the property and how they further explore the Parr family. Um, but here's my question though. All right, so Incredibles 2, we're excited. Mm -hmm. Are you excited about Sicario too? Yes. Uh, I'll tell you maybe when we come back for a break, we're going to cut to a, a short break. Uh, now is the time to get that refill or take a bathroom break because when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about July and August. Uh, and then uh, that will be the, uh, the end of our In the Mouth of Darkness summer movie preview show. So uh, stay tuned. There are many ways of wrapping production cables. Most of them are wrong. To protect the cable and keep it from tangling, the accepted method in the video industry is the RCA wrap, commonly known as over, under. This is how you do it. Grab the cable for the length where you want to make your first loop. Bring your hands together. Now gently twist so that the cable forms a natural loop. This is over. After your first loop, reach down, palm of your hand away from your body, Grab the next bit of cable and bring your hands together, looping the cable under. Now reach down again and loop the cable over. Continue to alternate between over and under until your cable is fully coiled. If your cable is wrapped properly, you can uncoil the cable quickly with no loops, kinks or tangles.
It takes practice to master the over-under method, but when you do, you will make your facilities manager very happy. If you want to learn more about this or other video production techniques, sign up for classes at Montgomery Community Media. And to answer your question, yes, I'm looking forward to Sicario 2. Really? Because Benicio Del Toro is my favorite actor, and um, even though we don't have Denis Villeneuve um, and Deacon's coming back, I'm still excited to see the film. But you didn't feel like the first film said at all? Like, what's, what more could they possibly say about the, the, the never-ending drug war? Uh, I don't know. I just love seeing Benicio Del Toro. Fair and enough. Fair when enough. he shoots a guy like in the middle of the street like that, it just <laughs> looks awesome to me. So I want to see it. Uh, but moving on to July, uh, we got The First Purge, which I really dig in that first trailer. Uh, Ant-Man and, and the Wasp, um, Marvel, the MCU's next uh, installment into, is it still Phase 3? It's still Phase 3. It's phase nice. 3 doesn't end until next year. It's epic. Uh, skyscraper, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, that's your, your guy? You yeah. Excited to see that? Sure. Oh, okay. Uh, the Equalizer 2. Uh-huh. Yeah? Keep going. Oh, how about Mission Impossible Fallout? There you go. That's it. There's no other movie to talk about the entire summer. This uh, is the only film I care about. This, uh, this trailer and A Quiet Place are two of my favorite trailers of the year. Oh my gosh. The way it uses Imagine Dragons Friction, yes. a song I cared nothing about mm -hmm. until I saw it cut to this trailer. Yeah. Now I'm like, am I an Imagine Dragons fan? Yeah. Turns out, no. But I'm still a fan of this trailer. Uh, you're a fan of Chris Mervacuari, who's coming back. Uh, after directing Rogue Nation? I mean, what other film franchise, you know, starts out pretty darn good, takes a big nosedive in its second film, Dang. comes back a little <laughs> bit for the third movie. You know, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman in Mission Impossible 3 He's is great. amazing. Yeah. Uh, Brad Bird does Ghost Protocol, awesome good. stunt in the middle of that movie. It's yeah. really good. But then Rogue Nation. Rogue Nation is without a doubt the best Mission Impossible film from an action standpoint. I agree. Um, not even, I don't even think just from an action standpoint. I mean, even the story and the villain, uh, how you know Ethan Hunt deals with the villain uh, towards the end of the film. Um, Christopher McQuarrie is just a smart director, so um, I'm very much looking forward to that one. I agree. That's my uh, most anticipated of July. And they're still like incorporating characters that were introduced three films back. Yeah. You know, Simon Pegg's Benji mm -hmm. was just this tiny little, uh, you know, uh, guy at, guy in the chair character for Ethan Hunt. And now he's, you know, in the field. In the field. And hopefully this time he'll actually get to wear a mask. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he hasn't be, had that opportunity yeah, yet. That, yeah, that'd be cool, yeah. too. And, you know, we haven't even seen the second trailer, which uh, is going to drop in the next couple of days, and that's going to reveal the big sky drop uh, stunt sequence. So, like, the biggest scene in the entire film oh. we're still waiting on. All right. Um, so we only have a few more seconds before we have to wrap up. But I do want to say with August, we got Mile 22, Darkest Minds, The Spy Who Dumped Me, Happy Time Murders, and The Meg, Jason Statham versus uh, Ancient Prehistoric Shark. Yeah, right. okay. That's almost yeah. instances. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Where tickets are bought, right? Um, definitely. All right. I'm there for every Jason Statham movie, and then now you make his co-star co a giant shark? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Done. Sold. Do you think we're going to get him punching the shark, or...? Well, I want punching. I want a roundhouse kick. I want, you know, him to get a new heart crank two style. <laughs> all right. I don't know about all that. Uh, yeah. Look, we hope you've enjoyed our takes on just a few of the films hitting multiplexes this summer. Now, whether you're looking for big budget popcorn fun or independent genre cinema and, or anything in between, it looks like there's pretty much something for everyone to enjoy. Um, so I hope you uh, have a good time at the movies this summer. I'm your host, Darren Smith, the Disco Dork, and my fellow dork, Brad Gullickson, a.k.a. Mouth Dork. And uh, we'll see you at the movies. Thank you.